Hey everybody, y'all listen. Today is about to be powerful. Y'all, today is about to be powerful. We are about to see the mighty victorious hand of God. Y'all better get ready. Mm. Hold on, y'all. Let me get us some music going. Let me get us some music going up in here, y'all. How y'all doing today? Come on. Go ahead and come in here and tell me how you doing today. How are you doing today? Y'all having a good day today? Hey, you need some Jesus. Hey, you gonna get you some Jesus today. Yeah. Y'all, it's about to be good, guys. You doing good? I've seen my God in the midst of the fire. Turn down the heat and make the devil a lie. He's always with me. He's always working. All things for my good. Victory. Victory. Thank you. I heard you turn him out. I'm fucking for that today. Hey, sis. Good morning, y'all. Thank you, Angela. Y'all listen. I don't know what it is about this song, but I kid you not, every time I heard this song, some good always happens that day. So it's going to be a good day today. Thank you. Y'all ready for the word? Thank you. Thank you, Miss Chuckany. Y'all listen, this word I got today is rich. Because God is doing a new thing in your life. Come on, somebody. Father God, we just want to thank you for the word of God. For the word of God is alive. It is full of power, God. God, we thank you, God, that you are about to move. You about to work. You about to show us something we ain't seen before, God. God, we thank you, Father God, for the shifting taking place in our life. We thank you, God. This is elevation season, God. God, this is breakthrough season, God. God, this is open door season. Oh, God, I prophesy open door season over there life today father god in jesus name y'all listen okay go ahead and turn to jonah i love you too strawberry rain come on y'all turn to jonah i just want to ask a question who's on your boat who's on your boat today because depending who's on the boat with you, it's going to depend on the outcome of what happens to you in the middle of the boat. Because see, depending if you got the right people in your boat, you're going to end up at the right place and the right things are going to happen. But see, if you got the wrong people in your boat, you might just start sinking. Come on. Come on. I love you too, Mississippi. Jonah chapter 1, Aisha like, girl, I'm like, girl, I'm down. Okay, Jonah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amontai, uh, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from being in the presence of the Lord. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh, but Jonah was like, Native, I'm going to a whole other place. I ain't going over there and delivering them people. I'm not going to go over there and do that. Jonah was like, nope. Mm -mm. 
And it said, he said, from being in the presence of the Lord as his prophet. See, he was running from his calling. God had called Jonah to be a prophet, but he was running from his calling. How many of you know you can run, but you can't hide? How many of you know you can try to run from your calling all day long? But that calling going to catch up with you, baby. So he said, and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish, the most remote of the Phoenicians, trading places the unknown. So he paid the appointed fare and went down to the ship to go with them to Tarshish from bringing the presence of the Lord as his servants and his minister. See, he was running from the call of God on his life. He was running from the call of God on his life. Thank you, Bree. Because God had called him to be a servant. God had called Jonah to be a minister. God had called Jonah to be a prophet. And so Jonah was running from his call because, see, his call carried a weight that he was not ready to bear. Because God was telling him, I want you to go because these people's wickedness has come up for me. And I need for you to go and be my mouthpiece and deliver the people and tell these people. That's why I tell you, Destiny, I wasn't going to tell you what I was preaching <laughs> I said, I'm not telling you what I'm preaching today. Come on. It's given, huh, Aisha? So, he's like, I, I. Because, see, he was nervous. He was nervous. He was scared. He was afraid. He didn't want to do that. He didn't want to deliver them people. He didn't want to tell them that. Uh-uh. How many of you, God told you, I want you to go tell these people they wicked. You running to go tell them. So, Jonah... Says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to detour. I'm going to go a different place. Now, now I'm not going to go and do what God is telling me to do. I'm going to go do what I want to do. Because what I want to do does not carry nor bear the same weight that I know this is getting ready to bear. Because I know that where I'm going, if I go and do what God is telling me to do, I know the weight of this assignment. See, I know the warfare. See, some of you, the reason why you're running from your calling is because you know the warf warfare that comes with your assignment. And because you don't want the warfare that comes with your assignment, you're running from your calling. See, you know what comes with being a prophetess. You know what comes with being a pastor. You know what comes with, the war with being a worship leader. So you're running from what God has called you to do because you're trying to avoid the warfare. But how many of you know that it's going to catch up to you one way or another? So then it says in verse four, but the Lord sent out a great wind upon the sea. God has a way of getting you back in his will. God knows just what to do to get you back in his will. See, you can run, baby, but you will not be able to hide because see, Jonah was like, I'm going to go flee. Isn't it funny? He was like, I I'm going to get on a boat. I'm just not going to get on the boat that you want me to get on, God. Oh, I oh I'm going to go somewhere, God. I'm just not going to go where you want me to go, God. Oh, I'm going to get out of where I am now. But see, I'm not. I I'm going to get out where I am now and go where I want to go and not where you want to go. Because see, God, where you want me to go, there is warfare. There's there's uh, persecution. There's frustration. There's some things over there. And I don't want to endure that. So God, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about and do my own thing. So then it says, but the Lord sent out a great wind upon the sea. And there was a violent tempest on the sea so that the ship was about to be broken. See, he thought that he could flee. He thought that he could run away from the call that was on his life. He thought that he could run away from the responsibility. But God was like, listen, you can run. You can do all that. But see, I know how to get you back in my will. See, listen, God knows how to get you back in his will. Listen, God knows how to get you back in his will. God knows how to get you back in alignment with what he's called you to do. See, you can try to run. Yeah, go to that job if you want to. I just need for you to know that God's going to meet you at that job. See, you think that by going to that job, it's going to neglect the fact that God told you to start that business. But just go over there to that job, baby, if you want to. I just need for you to know God's going to meet you over there, too. You think that because you being disobedient and you running away from God, all of a sudden God going to let up on you negative. Nah, -uh. what he's going to do is he going to cause frustration in that place because God knows how to get you to move up out of that place. He uses frustration. See, what did God do? God frustrated the waters to the point where the place that Jonah chose to try to flee in, he caused that place was to getting ready to break. 
There, what if the reason why things are falling apart in that place is because God knows the only way to get you in his will is to cause everything to fall apart and break. See, destiny, it had to fall apart at the business. There had to be things going on at that business because God knew if things weren't going on, you would have probably never stepped out. See, God had to cause some frustration, some irritation because God knows that through frustration and irritation, it will get you to move. So what if the reason why you so frustrated I told y'all I wasn't going to tell you my message. What if the reason why you're so frustrated and things seem to look like they're falling apart is because God is trying to get you to move. And the only way he knows how to get you to move is to dry up the well there. See, God knows as long as there's water, as long as there's substance in that area, then what's going to happen is, is you're going to make, you're going to stay there and keep drinking. So what if the reason why God dried up the water, dried up the well in that area is so that way you wouldn't have no reason to stay there anymore. See, God knows as long as you in that relationship and you feel good in that relationship and, and, and you comfortable in that relationship, you're going to stay. But what if the reason why God is starting to make you get frustrated in that relationship, starting to make you get uncomfortable? in that relationship is because he knows it's the only way to get you to move. See, what is the reason why God is getting, allowing you to get so irritated with your financial situation? Because God didn't call you to be the first millionaire in your family, but he knows that the only way to get you to believe for anything bigger is to frustrate you in your finances now, because he knows if I can get you frustrated enough in your financial situation, if I can get you irritated enough in your financial situation, just maybe you're going to believe me for bigger. See, God will use frustration to elevate you. Come on. Come on. You frustrated to flourish. He going to take you from frustration to flourishing. Come on. So then it says, then the mariners were afraid and each man cried out to his God. See, they were crying out to a God, just not the God. And they cast the goods that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Notice how, because the wrong person was in the boat, because somebody was in their boat that was being disobedient, it caused them to have to get rid of their own goods. They had to get rid of their own blessings. They had to get rid of their own stuff because somebody in the boat was being disobedient. So because of one man's disobedience in the boat, it caused other people to have to lose out on their stuff. How many times have you lost stuff because you hanging around the wrong people? Because the people around you are being disobedient and because of their disobedience is causing you to lose stuff. See, they had to get rid of the goods off of their own ship because of the wrong person being on the boat. It said, but Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had lain down and was fought, was fast asleep. I wonder if the reason why Jonah went to sleep is because Jonah knew why it was happening. I wonder if the reason why they overheard throwing stuff off the ship because of what's happening and Jonah goes to sleep. Be, be very watchful to the people who in the middle of, because sometimes we think that the reason why they not frustrated or they not worried about the storm or they're not reacting to the storm is because they got faith. But see, some people, the reason why they not reacting to the storm is because they know that they're the cause of the storm. See, you want to know why? You over there like, why they lied on me? How my business get out? And you over there freaking out because your business got out and you wonder why she's so calm. I wonder if it's because she know how your business got out. See, maybe the reason why they not, why you over there like, this don't make sense to me. This ain't at the math ain't mathing for me. It ain't adding up for me. What? Are they, but they not frustrated about it. He not over her saying nothing. And you wonder why he ain't saying nothing. So you think he ain't saying nothing because he got faith but just maybe he ain't saying nothing because he already know why the math ain't math and you just ain't caught up yet. See, Jonah didn't mind laying down because Jonah knew why they was going through what they was going through. And see, they over here in a panic getting rid of stuff because Jonah's over here being disobedient. They over here losing stuff out in they ship on they stuff from their things because of Jonah. Because of one man disobedience. Let me tell you something. All it takes is one. 
All it takes is for one rotten fruit to make the whole bag to start get rotten as well. See, if you put a rotten fruit by a good fruit, the thing that's on the rotten fruit is going to get over on the bad, on the good fruit. Just maybe the reason why your fruit has been corrupted is because it ain't got nothing to do with you. But maybe the reason why your fruit has been corrupted is because who you allowing to be around you. Come on. It says then. So they came to the cat. So the captain came and said to him, what do you mean you sleeper? Arise and call upon your God. He was like, come on, call upon your God. You, what you mean you sleeping? Like what you mean you ain't over her? We over her getting rid of stuff. You better wake up. You better, we over her calling on our God. You better call on your God too. Listen, I love the captain because he was good. He says, perhaps your God will give a thought to us so that we shall not perish. See, I bet the reason why the captain went to Jonah is because he realized, okay, we didn't, everybody on this ship done prayed to our gods. Ain't nothing changed. We didn't got rid of stuff off this boat. Ain't nothing changed. But there's one person on the boat that ain't prayed yet. There's one person on the boat that they not moved, but that they not doing nothing yet. So, uh-uh, no, 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 we, we wanted to back this thing up because we didn't pray. We didn't got rid of stuff and ain't nothing changed yet. You better figure out, after you done done everything that you can do naturally to figure it out, you better start checking your associations. You better start checking what's in your boat. You better start checking what you connected to. Because if it ain't you, it just might be that you have a connection problem. There just might be somebody in your boat. You better start checking your boat. See, the captain started checking the boat. <coughs> he said, and they each said to one another, come, let us cast lots that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. He said, we finna figure out why this happening to us. We finna figure out why we going through this storm. We finna figure out why we going through this hell. So you better start looking around and figuring out why you going through the storm you going through. Because some storms don't come because you did something wrong. Sometimes the storm comes because you got the wrong people in your boat. Because you connected to the wrong people. You better start checking. So it said, then they said to him, oh no, it says, so they cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. See, God has a way of exposing the problem. God has a way of exposing it. See, you may think that you can get away with it. You may think that you can run, but baby, you cannot hide. So you think that God don't see it. You think that you can run around and you think you can run and be disobedient. But see, uh-uh. God has a way of exposing and showing it. So it said, then they said to him, tell us, we pray you on whose account has this evil come upon us? What is your occupation? Where did you come from? And what is your country and nationality? They're like, we finna, we finna figure out who you is, okay? We finna figure out why you, why this happened to us, okay? We need to know, we need to get more. If the problem is you, baby, I'm gonna get to that, Ebony. Mm. He said, we, we finna figure out what well, we need to know. Come on, you need to let us know. Because see, we not understanding. What is it about you that doesn't cause all of this to happen? What is it about you? Because one man literally almost caused the whole boat to be broken. They were getting ready to drown. They were about to die. And they were like, I need to know who you is. Because I'm not about to die on your account. I'm not about to drown on your account. See, sis, what you don't realize is this. You think that your disobedience is only affecting you. But see, you don't realize it, but your disobedience to God is affecting other people. Because there are other people that are connected and attached to the call of God on your life. And if you keep being disobedient, you are causing other people to miss out as well. You are causing other people to miss out on what God has for them because of your disobedience 
disobedient. See, sis, when you're being disobedient, you can literally cause other people's stuff to be affected. You can cause other people's houses to sink. You can cause other people's ministries to not be flourishing because God put you in that ministry because you were to be a prophet. You were to be a voice. But because you were being disobedient to what God called you to do, the house is not receiving what they're supposed to receive. Because when God sends a prophet, it's so that way you can prosper. Because the Bible says, yeah, you know it's you, sis. Don't ask me that question. When God sends a prophet, it is to prosper. Second Chronicles 2020. It says this. Ooh, that's the need. Mm. 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 Destiny, I love you. And you know I'm just a messenger. God told me to tell you, Destiny. He said, there are people that are attached to you. And God says, by you not wanting to fully operate in your calling and be who you are called to be, there are other people that are missing out, Destiny, because of what you're not doing. You need, you need to be who God has called you to be. You got to be who God has called you to be, Destiny, because there are other people. And there are some words that should have came forth out of your mouth in the house that God has had you assigned to. There are, and even because I even see you have the gift of being able to interpret tongues. And there are times when you, God, the word was meant for you to be able to interpret it. But because of you not wanting to fully operate in the calling, it is hindering other people. You need to be obedient and step up and do what God has called you to do, boo. Okay, I'm done now. But listen, Whew. verse nine, and he said to them, I am a Hebrew. He said, I am a Hebrew and I reverently fear and worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, what is this that you have done? See, who's lacking because of what you've done? Whose life is in danger right now because of what you have done? Whose life could have been saved? Who could have been delivered? Who could have been set free? Who could be prospering right now? Who could have gotten up out of a situation had you been obedient to God? So he said, so they were afraid. He said, for the men knew that he fled from bringing, for the men knew that he fled from being in the presence of the Lord as his prophet and servant, because he had told them, they knew that he was out of the will of God. And because one man was out of the will of God, it was causing other people. To be put in danger. Other people's lives were put in danger. Because of one man being out of the will of God. God had called him to be a prophet. God had called him to be a minister. God had called him to be a servant. But because of his disobedience. It was causing other people to perish. Verse 10. I mean verse 11. Then they said to him. What shall we do to you that the sea may subside and be calm for us? They was like, what do we need to do for you? What do we need to do to you so we can get, so we going to be okay? Because see, they were smart enough to not let themselves drown on Jonah's account. Who is it that you are allowing yourself to drown on their account? Some of you are in relationships that you know are drowning you and killing you. But because you are unwilling to release it. It ain't too late, baby. Listen, if you got a post, God got a plan. Listen, whose life are you over there drowning on their account? I love you, baby, but I'm not about to drown for you. I love you, but I'm not about to die for you. I'm not about to be sitting over her. But listen, y'all already done heard my testimony of what happened to me in Broken Bow. I'm going to tell you right now, I couldn't even deal with what happened on Broken Bow, much less what they going through. Mm -mm. They said, for the sea became more and more violently 
temptuous. And Jonah said to them, take me up and cast me into the sea. So shall the sea be calm for you. For I know that it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. See, Jonah said, I know that because of my disobedience is why this sea is raging like it is. So if you will get me off the boat, the storm will come. See, some of you need to get some people out of your boat because if you just got them out of your boat, then your life would be more calmer. You would have more peace in your life. But see, you don't have peace in your life because you don't know how to release. See, there's a peace in the release. You got to release to increase in peace. I love a good analogy. See, not everybody can go where God is taking you to because there are some people that will drown you. Come on, there's some people that will drown you. And then if you know that you're out of the will of God, let, let's flip it. If you know you're out of the will of God, you need to be humble enough because it took humility for Jonah to be like, you know what? I know that it's me. I know that it's me. You got to be humble enough to be like, I know it's me, God. And Jonah was like, get me off the boat and y'all will be better. See, some of you, you would rather stay in your disobedience and drown other people than be humble enough to say, you know what? It's me. I'm going to get it in order. Then it says, nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship to land, but they could not. See, they tried to row harder to bring the ship to land, but it couldn't. It said, for the sea became more and more violent against them. It was like no matter what they tried to do, it got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Because he was, in, he was not in the will of God. What is the reason why things keep getting worse and worse and worse no matter what you do? Is it because you're out of the will of God? We talked about Haggai, the people that God had Haggai get a word to. Repent. You just need to repent. See, the people in Haggai, right? They were working, but there was a hole in their bag. They were securing the bag, but there was a hole in their bag. Why was there a hole in the bag they were securing? Because they were being disobedient. You can be securing a bag all you want, but if you're being disobedient, you will call a ho cause a hole to be in your own bag. It says, therefore, they cried to the Lord. We beseech you, O Lord. We beseech you. Let us not perish for this man's life and lay not us upon innocent blood for you, O Lord, have done as it was pleased. So they took up Jonah and cast him into the sea and the sea seized from its raging. Then the men reverently and worshipfully feared the Lord exceedingly and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows get this when they got Jonah out the boat it ceased and it stopped all it took was that one act of obedience to, and then all of a sudden it ceased and stopped but you know something else I noticed in this story even in Jonah's disobedience, God still got a miracle. God still did a miracle in the midst of his disobedience. What was the miracle? At the beginning of this chapter, those men were crying to false gods. But by the end of it, and when they saw what Jonah's God was able to do, God turned the heart of the men on the boat. See, God used, you know how God said, I take everything and I use it for your good. God even took the disobedience and used it for his good. God even took the fact that Jonah was out of the will of the God to cause other people to come back to Christ. They came back to Christ even in the middle of his disobedience. They started serving and worshiping the true God even out of his disobedience because God will take the, the things the enemy means for your evil and turn it for your good. So it still even worked out for the good because many lives were saved. Come on. Now I want to show you a different storm. Let me show you a different storm, okay? Mark chapter 4, starting at verse 35. 
On the same day when evening had come and he said to them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. Jesus was telling them, let us go over to the other side of the lake. And leaving the throng, they took him with them. Just as he was sitting in the boat in which he was sitting in the boats were with him. See, this is what happens when you go through a storm. But you, when you're in the middle of a storm, but this storm was in the midst of being obedient. There's a difference in this one. Verse 37, and a furious storm of wind of hurricane proportions arose and the waves kept beating into the boat so that it was already becoming filled. But he himself was in the stern of the boat asleep on the leather cushion. And they awoke him and said to him, Master, do you not care that we are perishing? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush now, be still and muzzled. And the wind sees, sank to rest as if exhausted by its beating. And there, it's Mark chapter 4, verse 38, I'm at now. No, no, verse 39, it said, And there was immediately a great calm, a perfect peacefulness. See, what was the difference in these two stories? Jonah's disobedience caused the storm and they had to throw Jonah off the boat just to cause it to cease. Jesus' obedience, they're in the middle of his obedience and them going over to the other side of the lake, there was a storm. But see, when they woke up Jesus, Jesus just spoke to the storm. And all it took was Jesus speaking to the storm to cause the storm. See, the right person on your boat can speak to the storm and cause it to stop. The wrong person on your boat will cause the storm. And as long as they're still in the boat, it won't stop. See, when Jonah was in the boat, it wouldn't stop. But when Jesus was in the boat, he caused it to stop. See, the wrong people being in your boat can cause a storm. The right people in your boat can stop the storm. Who's in your boat today? That's the message. That's the message. Who's in your boat today? Because the wrong people in your boat will cause a storm. The right people in your boat will stop the storm. Who's in your boat Mm. There's a scripture. Mm. This is what the Lord is telling me. Isaiah 43 verse 18. Do not earnestly remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. See, God says, do not earnestly, don't sit there going over and over and over again in your mind about the former things. You got to release the former things. He said, neither consider the things of old. See, God is saying, don't consider what happened last time. Don't consider the things of old. I recognize that when you was going through it this last time, it ended up that way. But God says, see, don't worry about what happened last time. See, I know the last time you started the business, it went bad because you had the wrong people in your boat. But see, there's a different person in your boat this time because God says, as you get in alignment with my will, I'm coming into the boat with you. See, in the former things, you had the wrong people in your boat, so it caused you to sink. But see, in the new thing I'm getting ready to do, I'm going to be in the boat with you. See, listen, I think about Peter, how Peter had told all night. See, when Peter told all night with just his friends, in his boat. See, Peter didn't catch nothing that night. But see, somebody entered into Peter's boat that had a grace, had a favor on his life that it shifted the whole thing. See, when you have the blessing in the boat with you, there's something that's going to happen differently. When you have the provider in the boat with you, it's going to be a little bit different. When you have the God of more than enough in a boat with you, it's going to be different this time. And see, when Peter told all night with his friends, they didn't catch nothing. But see, when, it, when, when Jesus said, go back out See, it was different. It was different because Jesus was with him. See, Jesus was with them in the boat. So when Jesus was in the boat and the storm came, he spoke to it and the storm stopped. See, you got to have the storm stopper in the boat with you. See, when Peter told all night by with his friends, they didn't catch nothing. But Jesus said, 
I'm going out there with you this time. See, there's a difference when Jesus is in the boat with you. Come on, there's a difference when God gets in this thing. Because God, when he got in this thing with them, Peter said to him, I recognize this is what happened. But see, I'm not going to allow what happened in the past to keep me from my next miracle. See, some of you is allowing what happened in your business, what happened in the ministry, what happened in the past to cause you to miss out on your next miracle. See, I know your last relationship was bad, but God said, try again. See, I know the last time you stepped out into your prophetic gifting and you stepped out in ministry, it went bad. But God said, try me again, because Peter said, nevertheless on your word I'm going to go out there and when he went out there with the word see there's a difference when you go out there with the word because when he went out there with the word what happened is he caught so much that literally he not only you know how God says that when you test me and you try me on this thing he said that you I'm going to pour out a blessing so big you ain't got enough room to contain it let me tell you about the blessing it's going to be so big that you ain't got enough room to contain it see God blessed Peter so much did not only did Peter's boat get filled, but Peter's friend who was watching the miracle had to come over there and bring their boat too. See, this blessing about to be so big that it's about to bless everybody around you. See, I just need for you to put in the comments everything attached to me wins. Come on, everything attached to me wins. Because listen, God is about to do a mind-blowing blessing in your life. You're about to see breakthrough upon breakthrough upon breakthrough. But see, you got to get the right people in your boat if we're going to get to this breakthrough. So verse 19 says, Behold, I am doing a new thing. He says, I'm doing a new thing. Come on. Come on. I I let me play this song. He says, I'm doing a new thing. Come on, he's doing a new thing. Come on. He says, now it springs forth. You know, the Bible says now faith is. Come on, now faith is. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. <coughs> he says, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Now faith is. See, faith is always in the now. Faith is not in tomorrow. Faith is in the now. See, you can't ride off yesterday's faith. You got to get new faith. You can't ride off yesterday's faith. You got you to gotta replenish every day. He says, now it springs forth. I need somebody to catch it. Now. Your miracle is springing forth. Now, your breakthrough is springing forth. Come on. It's a new day. Yes, fresh anoint. Come on. I can feel it. It's flowing my way. Come on. It's a Woo! Mm. I'm saying the presence of God just whoosh over my head. And it's coming to me. Or if you believe that, lift your hands and say, It's a new season. Come on. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. So God says, Do you not perceive it? And know it. Will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. See, you thought that your blessing was going to come in a different place, but God said, I'm going to do it in the desert just to show you who I am. God says, I'm going to do it in the middle of the wilderness just to show you who I am. I'm going to do it in the middle of your hell just to show you who I am. I'm about to do a whole miracle in the middle of the mess just to show you who I am. You might be in the middle of what it looks like you falling apart. But see, really and truly, everything's falling into place. See, he didn't say I'm going to do this in the pretty place. He said, no, I'm going to do this in the wilderness. I'm going to do this in the desert because when I do this thing, I need to do it in such a way where you're going to know it's me. 
See, Destiny, they thought it was going to happen when you was at that shop. But God says, no, I'm going to take her away from the shop. I'm going to take her out of the job. I'm going to take her out of the workplace. So when I do it, when I do it in the desert, when I do it in the wilderness, it ain't going to make sense. See, God is going to confuse your enemies because he's going to bless you in the place they least expected it. See, God says, I'm going to do it in the place that your enemies least expected it to happen. See, they thought your breakthrough was going to come through them, but God said, no, 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 no. See, I'm about to bless her in the place where nobody says she can flourish. I caught that. God says, I'm going to cause you to be blessed in the place where nobody thought you were going to flourish at. See, they didn't think you was going to make it through that dry season. They didn't think you was going to make it through the desert. See, they didn't think you was going to make it being a single mother. See, they thought that you weren't going to be able to make it as a single mother. They thought you weren't going to be able to make it through the divorce. See, they thought you weren't going to make it in the middle of a pandemic. See, they thought you weren't going to be able to make it through COVID. They thought you weren't going to be able to make it through where the whole world is falling apart. See, there was no way your business should have flourished the way it flourished. There was no way you should be birthing in the middle of this place. Hmm. Oh, let me find this scripture in Revelations, Lord. Ooh, I'm not my boy. Ooh, hallelujah. Let me find this scripture in Revelations. Give me a moment. Oh, where is it at, God? Because it's good. Oh, it's good. God, I know exactly what you're talking about. Where is it at? Mm. Where is it at, God? Oh. Oh, where is it at? Let me show you something. Because I'll never forget when God showed me this in Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. A great sign and wonder. Warning of future events of ominous significance appeared in heaven. A, a woman clothed with the sun. With the moon under her feet and with a crown like garland tiara. Of, of 12 stars on her head. Verse 2. I got to stand up because when you catch what I'm saying, you're going to have to run around your house. If you at work, the moment you catch what I'm about to say, it's going to make a whole lot more sense. Woo! It says and she was pregnant and she cried out in birth pains in anguish of her delivery. Verse three, then in another ominous sign, wonder was seen in heaven. Behold, a, a huge fiery red dragon, come on, with seven heads and ten horns and seven kingly crowns did them upon his head. And his tail swept across the sky and dragged down a third of the stars and flung them into the earth. And the dragon, come on, the dragon stationed himself in front of the woman who was about to deliver See, what you don't realize is God is about to cause you to deliver in front of your enemy. See, you thought that, your, that God was going to remove your enemies before you gave birth. But see, you don't realize it. You about to give birth in front of your enemies. So it says, so that he might devour her child as soon as she brought it forth. And she, and it says, and she brought forth a male child, one who is destined to shepherd and rule all the nations with an iron staff. And get this, and her child was called up to God and to his throne. Do you notice how the enemy was stationed right in front of her? He was stationed, oh, I feel this word. I feel this word over my life. See, you may not catch by the spirit what I didn't caught, but see, I didn't caught it by the spirit. See, listen, the enemy thought he stationed himself right in front of her as she was giving birth because the enemy thought he was going to be able to catch the child. He was going to take the child. But see, here's the thing. God allowed. 
allowed her enemy to be right in front of her as she gave birth just to show her enemy that he wasn't going to be able to touch what was on the inside of her. Your enemy may be right in front of you. Them people who talk down to you might be right in front of you. But I need for you to just realize something. They're not going to be able to touch what's coming out of you. Woo! Hallelujah. They're not going to be able to touch. They're not going to be able to touch what's coming out of you. It says, I, I just got to read it again because I, I just need you to catch it a second time. It says she was pregnant and she cried out in her birth pains in the anguish of her delivery. Then another ominous sign wonder was seen in heaven. Behold a huge fiery red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven kingly crowns diadems upon his head. Come on. In his, twi- in his tail. Swept, come on, his tail swept. See, listen, baby, they can sweep back and forth. They can wave their hands back and forth. They can try to act like they gonna touch you. They may be able to touch the things around you, but they can't touch you. See, he was able to sweep and touch the things around, but he couldn't touch her. You don't realize it, but you're untouchable. You're untouchable, baby. You untouchable. It may be able. Do you notice? Come on. I heard Job. I heard Job. You notice how he can touch the things around Job, Job, but he couldn't touch Job. He can touch the things around Job, but he couldn't touch Job. He may be able to touch the things around you, baby, but he can't touch you. Come on. So then it says this, and his tail swept across the sky and dragged down a third of the stars and flung them to the earth. And the dragon stationed himself in front of the woman who was about to deliver. Come on, he stationed himself right in front of the woman about to deliver. See, your enemy is right in front of you, baby. I get it. Your enemy is right in front of you. You getting ready to deliver. I just heard the Lord say somebody needs to push. You need to push. Come on. You need to push. See, you need to pray until something happens. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep praising. Because your enemy might be right in front of you. But see, you still go have that baby. You still go bring forth the business. Come on. Woo. He says, so that he might devour her child as soon as she brought it forth. See, the enemy was in front of her because he wanted to devour her child. The enemy was in front of her because he wanted to devour her child. See, your enemy's in front of you because he wants to take you out. But how many of you know you untouchable? How many of you know you untouchable? Come on. And it says, and she brought forth a male child. One who is destined to shepherd, rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman herself fled into the desert, the wilderness, where she has a retreat prepared for her by God. Hold on. Because I need you to see how it all ties in together. Isaiah 43, 10. I mean, Isaiah 43, 18. Come on, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. He says, I will make a way in the wilderness. And he said, in rivers in the desert. Are you catching it? He says, I'll make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Then we go over to Revelation chapter 12, verse 6. And it says, and the woman herself fled into the desert, the wilderness, where she has a retreat prepared for her by God in which she is to be fed and kept safe for 42 months and three and one half years. Come on, somebody. God made a retreat for her in the middle of the desert. God made a retreat for her in the middle of the wilderness. God fed her in the 
desert. God made a way in the desert. God made a river in the desert. See, the enemy thought he was going to take her out, but he couldn't take her out because what was on the inside of her, what was protecting her was bigger than anything outside of her. You need to know that what is surrounding you, it may look like you surrounded, but you surrounded by God. It may look like you're going to be taken out, but you shall not be taken out because see, you thought God brought you to the wilderness to kill you. You thought God brought you to the desert to kill you, but nah, God brought you to the wilderness to prepare a place for you. God brought you to the desert to prepare a will to prepare a river for you. So you don't realize it, but your drinking place is over in the wilderness. Your drinking place is over in the desert. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mm. It says, then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels went forth to battle with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. Come on. But they were defeated and there was no room found for them in heaven any longer. And the huge dragon was cast down and out. And the age old serpent who was called the devil and Satan. He who is the seducer, deceiver of all humanity the world over. He was forced out and down to the earth and his angels were flung out along with him. Then I heard a strong, loud voice in heaven saying, now it is come. The salvation, the power, and the kingdom, the dominion, the reign of our God, the power, the sovereignty, and authority of his Christ, the Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren, who keeps bringing before our charges against them day and night, has been cast out. And they have overcome, conquered him by means of the blood of the lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. For they did not love and cling to life even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap till death. Hold, and it says they had to die, till they had to die for their witness. But it says they overcame by the blood of the lamb. Baby, I need for you to know there's already blood that's been shed for you. There's already been blood that was shed so that you may overcome. And then it says, and by the word of their testimony. See, baby, you got to hold fast to the testimony. Because see, there's a that testimony. There's something in that testimony that God is doing. There's something in that testimony. Come on. See, you can't hold on to this testimony because somebody else is going to get their breakthrough through the testimony. I got to show you another scripture. Isaiah 58, starting at verse 10, it says, And if you pour out that which you sustain your own life for the hungry and satisfy the need of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in darkness and your obscurity and gloom become like the noonday. Verse 11, catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it. And the Lord shall guide you continually and satisfy you in drought and dry places. See, there's something about drought and dry places that God loves to use the dry places to get the glory out of. See, you're looking at the dry place wrong. Because what you don't realize is that God can cause you to bring forth in a dry place. See, you thought that the place you were going to bring forth at was going to be a place that looked good. But see, God knows that he can still get the glory in the wilderness. God can still do miracles in the middle of the desert. Can I got somebody on today that would say, God, I thank you for satisfying me in dry places. He said, you shall be watered. Like a garden, like a spring whose waters fail not. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. See, some of you, there's some dreams that fell apart, but God's about to rebuild it. And he said, and you shall raise up the foundations, the buildings that have laid waste. See, God had to literally tear up the foundation so he can bring it back better. There were some buildings in your life that laid waste, but God says, I'm building it back up. And it says many generations. See, baby, this blessing is generational destiny. What God is doing right now is generational. 
And he said, you shall be called repairer of the breach. See, the enemy came in through a breach, but God says, I am the repairer of the breach. I'm going to repair the place that the enemy came in and restore of streets to dwell in. See, you thought you weren't going to be able to go back. You thought you weren't going to be able to dwell in that place again. See, you thought when the business fell apart, that was the end. You thought that when the relationship fell apart, that was the end. But see, God says, I'm a restorer of the streets to dwell in. God says, I'm going to bring you back, but I'm bringing you back better. God says, I'm bringing you back, but I'm bringing you back better. Come on, I got to play this again. Because I need for you to catch it. I need for you to catch it. Because it's a new season. It's a new day. Yes. Fresh mm, I receive it. I receive it. I can feel it. It's flowing my way. Oh, oh. It's a season of power. And prosperity. Come on. It's a new season <coughs> and it's coming to me. Oh, if you believe Come on, I believe it. Come on, let's praise him for the new season. It's a new day. 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 It's a new you're entering into a new season. Hold on, back here, bravo. Come on, you're gonna give birth to something new. You're giving birth to something new. Come on.
God says all that was told. Come on. God told me to tell y'all, when you sow today, sow for your new season. God told me, when you sow today, sow for your new season. Come on, we sowing for our new seasons. I'm sowing for my new season today. I'm sowing for my new season today. Come on, I'm sowing for my new season today. I'm sowing for where God is taking me and for me in, in this ministry today. Come on. It's sowing time, y'all. We sowing for our new season today. I want to encourage you, sow in faith for your new season today. When you sow today, we sowing for our new season. God, I thank you, Jesus. What you say, I'm coming out. Come on. giving information I know I kind of went fast but the reason why I'm going fast today is because I gotta go get my passport y'all y'all we getting ready we getting ready and I'm going to get my passport today y'all okay so um uh my apple pay oh, that is a good question because I know I have apple pay hold on um, how do I get the Apple Pay info? Like, I, I have Apple Pay. I just don't know how to get the info for it. Her, and I will put the giving information back up here, y'all. I'm sorry. I, I t Like I say, I, I'm trying to make sure I get to this appointment, y'all. Her, I put the giving information. But uh, do anybody know how I would get the Apple Pay info? Because I don't know how to get the Apple Pay info. I know I have it. I just don't know how to use it. Cause I don't really, I know how to use it when I'm using it for something. Okay. Y'all, I love y'all, but I, I can't give out my phone number. I'm so I can't give out my phone number. I can, I have a chime account. Oh yeah. I saw the pictures. Desiree. They're beautiful. That they, they are beautiful. I have. Yeah. I'm sorry. I can't give out my number, but I do have a chime account. I'll try to see if I can get it linked to my Chime today, okay, y'all? Yeah, I work on getting it linked to my Chime account today. Y'all, I'm excited for all that God is doing, all that God has in store, y'all, because, y'all, we, God is just doing so many new things, and we are just, y'all, we getting ready. We getting ready for everything God has in store for the ministry, and just being able to travel, you know, and as of tomorrow... It is officially a hit the road season, y'all, and stuff. And so, yeah, but y'all, I'm really excited. Also, too, um, do y'all need the info anymore? Or do y'all got it now? And you know, one thing you could do too, you could screenshot your your thing now. 
Yeah, y'all, I am so excited. Okay, y'all. And if you still want to sow, just go to my Linktree account. Father God, I want to pray right now over everybody who sowed today, Father God. God, I thought that you are moving and you are working in their financial situation. God, I say right now that they shall have a surplus, God. God, I thank you for overflow. God, I thank you for overwhelming victory, Father God. God, I thank you that you are working all things together for their good in their situation, God. God, no matter what they sowed for, God, we thank you that we are moving into a new season, God. God, we are moving into a season of favor. We are moving into a season of prosperity, God. God, we thank you that the Lord is our shepherd and we shall not lack, Father God. God, your word says that no good thing will you withhold from those who diligently seek you. So, God, we seek you today knowing, God, that you do not withhold from your children, God. So, God, I pray blessings over them today, Father God, in Jesus' name. I love y'all so much. Also, I do have some coaching sessions. So if you would like to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, business coaching session with me, life coaching session with me, you need help in any capacity, go book your session with me, y'all. And I love you and I pray you have a good day, okay? Okay, bye, y'all.